gives me great pleasure to be on this st stage introducing this wonderful, awesome woman. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Danessa Marks. Nigerian energy. The Nigerian love is her first time in Nigeria. Welcome, Danessa. Thank We're extremely, you. extremely happy, elated to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate I that. You. Thank you. <laughs> so, how are we starting off this class? Are we about to create magic? Yes, if I could just not cry. Yeah. No, don't cry. Lady, do you love Danessa right now? Thank you. You gotta you. make her, she needs to feel it, okay? So Danessa is gonna be taking us through the power, the power, the yes. power in beauty, okay? We're gonna have a little um, class, yeah? But to start off, before we, we do all of that, I want you to tell us, how has it been so far? I don't want to leave, so I need for somebody to make room for me because I'm staying. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so what do you want? You want a Nigerian man or just a house or, because we're, we're good people. A loving man. A loving man, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so tell us about your journey. How has it been so far um, in, in the makeup industry? Oh, it's been extraordinary. And honestly, before I even start though, okay. I really want to just thank GT Bank. I've been Put your wanting, hands together for GT Bank, guys. I've been wanting to come to Nigeria for a long time. Like, I'm extremely emotional right now because for the longest I've Aww. wanted to come. And I really appreciate GT Bank for Aww, having thank me. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. And I'm so excited about the topic that I'm talking about today, the power in beauty, because I have to tell you, for everyone in this room who's even considering a career in beauty, I really want you to know that the beauty industry completely changed my life, not just my life and my family's life. And I want to just share with you more about my journey, how I was able to come to where I am to be in front of you guys today, and hopefully be able to leave you with some tips and some techniques on how I approach makeup, how I approach beauty. And I really want it to be interactive. So even as I'm talking, as I'm doing the demonstration, you guys are my family, ask questions. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you, okay? Yes. <laughs> So, Danessa, how do you want to start this with the, with the slides first, right? Yeah, I'm okay. going to go ahead there. One of the things, I, I just wanted you guys to know a little bit about me because maybe in some way you may see a little bit of yourself in me. I come from a very, very, very poor family. I mean, poor. I shared clothes with my siblings, like very, very humble beginnings. And it was a mission, you know, for my parents to have at least one person to go to college. So my whole mission was to like fulfill my parents' dream and do the, you know, get a great job in corporate America and kind of save the family. Um, and that worked for a little while until I turned 30 and everything came crashing. The company that I worked for for over 10 years just decided that they wanted to close. The owner wanted to shift to another career and here I am, 30 years old, a single mother with two kids and had to find a way to start all over again. I, at a, I was at a place at that time where I was kind of working, but not necessarily passionate about what I was doing. Has anybody been in that situation before? Just so, everybody, right? <laughs> I was kind of just, there. Yeah, I was just kind of just going through the motions, and I, I never really had the courage to make a shift because it's what my parents wanted. But at that point, I just decided, you know what, if I'm going to start all over again, I want to do something that makes me feel good. I wanted to do something that inspires me. And that's when I made the decision to start in makeup. Um, I was working at a publishing company, so I would see they hired makeup artists and photographers all the time. And there was just something about the energy of the artists that came in. They had a whole different swagger about them. They seemed happy. They made their own schedule. And the best part was they got paid at the end of the day. How do you guys feel about getting paid at the end of the day? Yeah. So I was like, this is an immediate way I can feed children. I'm in. The only thing was I knew nothing about makeup. I never even did my own makeup. Fancy makeup for me was wearing blue eyeliner. So that, that was the biggest problem. So at that point, I needed to just figure out the industry. And so I started doing a little research. And back when I got started, I'm 48 years old. 
I started when I was 30. <laughs> Yay for yes, 48! Vanessa, yeah. 48 is the new 38, so what are you talking about? <laughs> So when I started, there was no social media. You couldn't learn on YouTube. There was none of that. So I really just had to go to the library and find books. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of people who really made an impact on me. Um, there. So you guys probably know these people. Sam Fine and Kevin O'Quine. In 2000, when I started doing makeup, these were the images that inspired me. These are the people who just made me, you know, I felt something when I looked at their work. And I'm like, if I'm going to be in this industry, I want to have that kind of an impact. You know, I want to be able to move people with just an image. And so I just really just studied their work and just didn't understand anything I was reading, but I just loved the pictures. And I was like, this is the kind of aesthetic that I want. And that was the cover of Essence Magazine when I started doing makeup. And it really inspired me because I find a found life. I was never able to find a foundation shade that matched me. I could never turn pages in magazines and find anybody who looked like me. So I was really committed that if I was going to go on this journey, it was going to start with me and people who look like me. And that really was where my mission began. So I didn't know how to do makeup, so it was really a serious hustle. How many of you are doing makeup but never went to a makeup school? Okay, ah, so, so all the, the of you can relate to me. It's kind of like on-the-job training. Mm -hmm. So Social everything. media, YouTube, I guess, They're, for them. Ah, for them. If you're yeah. starting now, you're yeah. super lucky that you have that. But for me, it was just like figuring it out. And I was horrible in the beginning. But I was really nice. And I asked for help all the time and work for free. And then people decided just to give me a chance. And I started doing work for hair magazines. Some of you may have known, seen my work from way back then. Very different than the work that I do now. But the hair magazines were my training ground. And I would just sit in a room and models would come. And it was like a factory. Just doing face after face after face after face. So any of you do makeup in those types of environments now where you're just like churning people out, people pay you by the face, that's pretty much how I got started. It was by the face. If it takes you an hour, then you're not going to make a lot of money. If you could do it quickly, you can do well. And most of the time I was doing it absolutely free because I was a new makeup artist and they weren't even willing to pay me. So about a good year, I worked for free. Oh, wow. And then during the day, I would just get odd jobs, odd temp jobs so I can feed children. So it was just a lot of like on the job training for me. And eventually, things, I decided that if no one was going to give me an opportunity, I'm going to have to take Created. one on my own. Yeah. So what I did was I reached out to some hair magazines. And said, hey, I realize that you don't have any beauty stories in your magazine. Would you be interested in having some beauty stories? I'll do them absolutely free. I'll write them, I'll do the, fo I'll do the photo shoots, everything for free, oh, wow. if you just give me an opportunity. Oh, wow. So I started writing for Hype Hair magazine. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Hype Hair. It's a, it's a magazine in the U.S. that was really big in the uh, African-American uh, space. And I started writing beauty stories. They just, people started to see my name. They just assumed I was a big makeup artist because my name was in a magazine. And pretty much that's really how I was able to move forward. Back then, the only people that were known, your work wasn't known unless you saw it in print because we didn't have the same media that was available today. So I wrote for free and eventually they liked the work and they started to pay me. And for years I did that. I wrote for hair magazines and did the beauty stories, but it was really the catalyst to my whole career. And I did a series of celebrity shoots. I had the opera Britney Spears and Madonna video and work with the amazing, amazing uh, musicians, all every R&B group that you can think of back then, mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to touch them, male and female, That's which amazing. was awesome. But what I realized during that whole process is even though there is like, uh, you know, people get excited if you say you do celebrities, I wasn't excited doing celebrities. Oh, just, really? Why? It just wasn't for me. I think part of what everyone will learn it's like in the beginning, you're just doing, you're, you're earning money, you're taking jobs, you never want to say no. But after a while, you will figure out the things that resonate with your spirit and the things that don't. Okay. Like I left corporate because I, it wasn't inspiring and this wasn't either. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. It's, um, the makeup was very specific. It really wasn't me. 
I didn't feel like I was learning anything new. There's a lot of personalities you have to deal with. I can imagine. And I just want to go to work every day and be happy. <laughs> so I just decided that that wasn't the direction. Um, and I felt that more on the commercial side was for me. So I was already in hair. And so I just reached out to one hair company, like, you know what, I'd love to do one of your ads. It was a company called Shake and Go. And that went from that one company to me doing every single hair brand that exists in the United States. I've done their advertising for probably 10 years straight. Thank you. And that was what I did for a very long time. And from hair, I moved on to hair products. So this was an amazing opportunity. I had to work with Luster Products and a few other hair companies okay. that allowed me to do their perm boxes. Uh -huh. So back then, like if you did a perm box, you were it. Yeah. I know I'm old and I'm dating myself, but like this was like, oh, you did it. You were it at this point. Right, your work is on a perm. <laughs> um, so much of my career was there. But again, it was a great training ground for me to understand the, the industry, understand how to work on the commercial side, understand how to work in celebrity, not necessarily making my heart pump, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I moved on. And for me, education was the thing that really changed lives for me. I started to get requests for people to, you know, show them how to do makeup. Most of it came from hairstylists because they were like, you didn't even exist and suddenly you're like, you're on a perm box. Like, <laughs> how did you learn how to do makeup? And I started holding these workshops. It started with like 10 people, it grew to like 20, then 50, and then I was teaching like hundreds of people at a time. Um, but it became very difficult because I'm only one person and I moved on to the DVDs. And I think I met a lot of the people in the room from the DVDs. Ah. I became so passionate with education, it was really my thing. And this was really, this was before there was any social, um, so it was really hard for people to learn how to do makeup. There weren't uh, master classes, like, there was nothing like this. If you weren't apprenticing with someone, you just had to learn on your own. And because, you know, for me, I knew how learning the correct way changed my entire life, I wanted to kind of give back a bit. So I reprioritized and focused a lot on education. Um, and I have a series of 20 or so DVDs, they're about two to three hours long, just step by step, eyes, contouring, things of that nature. And th that really opened the door for me, because now the DVDs, they were sold all over the world. So I started to get requests to teach all over the world, and oh, wow. just continued to grow from there. Wow. wow. Thank you. Education still continues to be the thing that makes my heart pump the most. It's the thing that I get most excited about. I train a lot at um, makeup shows all over the world. Okay. It's just, it's my thing. It's okay. my jam. I love okay. it. Um, as a result, I have two books that I've written. Uh, oh, one that I have here now, and I, I hope to be doing a new one because my artistry has changed so much. Okay. I think that book came out in 2004 four or six or eight, one of those okay, years. Okay. And we're like way beyond that. My yeah. aesthetic has changed a bit. Okay. And I've learned so much more, so I really want to, to do a new one. Okay. That's as well. Cool. Um, interesting thing happened as a result of the education. Some of the companies that I used to do makeup for were also manufacturers and they were looking for ways to um, do a better job as making product for women of color. So I started working in development and curating products for different brands. Um, some you may be familiar with, like Kiss Cosmetics. I don't know if they sell Kiss here. Kiss? And no? Does anyone know Kiss? Uh, ah, okay. IMB, I'm sorry. Ruby Kisses. <laughs> you know, all of those brands. I've developed maybe five or six brands under the umbrella of Kiss ah, okay. that are sold in beauty supply stores all over the world. And I also started to develop products of my own. Oh, yeah. um, back in 2000, no, before I... You, no, before you go, how did you just go into developing products of your own? It's pretty interesting, and I'm glad you asked that question because mm -hmm. I kind of skipped all over yeah. that. I have no background in education as it relates to product development, but what I do know is the needs of women of color. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and that was really the driver. Okay. But 
for that industry, I was able to do a lot of on-the-job training as well. Oh. You know, I understood the aesthetic. I understood, like, the shades that we needed, okay. the level of pigmentation that we need in the products, the range of shades that we need. And that was the part that they didn't know. In terms of okay. chemistry yeah. and everything else, that they already, already understood. Okay. It was everything else. Mm. And I had the everything else, which was okay. great. And that's really how I got introduced. And the more you do it, the more you learn, and then the more you can contribute. And okay. it kind of built from there. All right. Okay. So, yes, here are some of the brands that I work with. And the beauty of that part of my career is that not only was I creating the products, but I also had my hand in the advertising and how the products would be marketed. In that process of working for other brands, it really was a training ground for me and learning how to work with my own brand. Right. So it's kind of like my whole career in beauty has been on the job training, which has been an amazing blessing for me. I'm going to actually, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. So remember how you said you were doing all of this for free initially? Yeah. And so now you're at this stage in your life where you're developing products and all of that. And I know it's a question that someone from the audience is probably trying to ask as well. How were you able to set up a price as to how much you're going to charge a client? Based on what? Is it the, the, the products you use or is the value of yourself? I mean, it's always about the value. And that's why in the beginning I had nothing to offer. So I was willing to work for free. If you have nothing to offer, then you need to like lay yourself out on the table and just okay. say, take me as I am. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Wash brushes or whatever. You know, you know but after a while, once you start working and then you're... Um, You've reached a level of professionalism uh, where you know that you have something that you can contribute, then of course you want to set your prices. And your standard balance is a balance of an industry standard and then what you bring to the table. And for me, I learned that you may start off like what the industry is charging and you realize right away that doesn't always support you and it doesn't always pay the bills. Okay. You know, because... Um, if somebody, if some, if the industry thought that I was worth five hundred dollars a day, but the money that I was spending and Your the time and everything, cost, it didn't, yeah. the value wasn't there, mm -hmm. it didn't make sense, yeah. right? Okay. So at some point, you have to establish what your own rate is. You lose customers in the process, but it's okay. So you lose 10 people that paid $35 to gain one that pays 500. You're really not losing, and you're really just elevating yourself, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead, then. The pinnacle of my development career came with Benefit Cosmetics. Through all of that work um, for the beauty supply companies, uh, there was a young lady who worked there who moved to a brand called Benefit. Are you guys familiar with Benefit? They're a prestige brand. They're sold in over 45 countries. And they also had no clue how to develop shades or had any idea about color. And so one of the girls who was like my uh, little assistant when I was at KISS. She was in a big role at Benefit. And this goes back to some of the conversations earlier today. Okay. You never know, this industry is so small, mm -hmm. so cyclical, you're gonna constantly keep seeing the same people over and over again. Yeah. And she invited me over to meet with the team there at Benefit and they hired me to be their director of product innovation. And I developed products for over five years there at Benefit. And one of the major products that I worked on was their new brow collection. Benefit Brows is one of the biggest cosmetic launches in cosmetic history. And I developed that entire line from start to finish. And that's probably one of my biggest, proudest moments. And they're now the number one brow brand in the in, world. In the world. Yeah. Danessa, I, I, I feel like a lot of people want to see a technic. And that's why, they, I mean, if you're here for the technic, raise, raise up your hand. Yeah, there you go. And so we All don't right. want a situation where you know, we're running out of time and you're not able to go through your technique because I'm sure they want to see the step-by-step -step process. So before I can even do anything, I want to talk about where my aesthetic came. Recently, some of you may notice, outside of doing makeup, I started doing photography. This is about two years ago. Yeah. And in doing photography, it completely changed my perspective as a makeup artist. I'm a much better makeup artist now. Because okay. So they make up completely differently. Okay. So there's an aesthetic and there's some concepts that I use in doing makeup now that really have been um, developed more because of my photographic um, introduction. <laughs> um, and I want to share those with you. And if you want to write some of these things down that you can, and I'm going to show you how I approach makeup as well. 
but trust the person. Yeah, I, I really want to make sure. My point in telling you the story is that I really want you guys to really trust the process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're just kind of getting ready to be ready to be ready for the next thing. You may not even figure out what that next thing is in, until we're along the journey, but just really to embrace it all. Okay. All right, we'll skip all of this. She's bored. I'm no, just kidding. I'm not. Are you joking? I'm just no. kidding. I'm just kidding. So that was one of my first makeups at the top there. Well, I did that makeup and I was like, I finally arrived. That right there. I was, oh, like, so good, I was like, you can't tell me nothing. I'm a makeup artist. That was it. <laughs> and this is to where I am now. Totally different totally different approach to the makeup. You can probably even just see right now like where I'm gonna be going in this conversation. Everything is very one dimensional before. How so? It's like flat. Me. Explain that. This is for it's novices just like flat. Me. It's not, there's no life there. Okay. That image is not pulling you into anything or selling you anything. You don't want to be any. You, but the lip color. You don't want to be in her life. Yeah, <laughs> no, not but really. But I like her lip. <laughs> more interesting. She's so much more interesting. Yeah, you want to yeah. know why is she letting honey be poured all over her face? Like, yeah. so much more interesting, right? Yeah. And that's really what I want to talk about today. You know, as makeup artists, we're really powerful creators. You know, it says makeup artists right? You are an artist. So there's two parts to doing makeup. Yes, there's all the technical aspects and understanding skin tones and understanding how to prep the skin, but that is this much of it. I can tell you your career is going to be based on everything else. It's your art, your magic. Um, it's, if, that's, if there's only one thing you take away from my conversation today, it's that. The one thing that's going to take you from where you are today to everything that you ever dreamed of is your personal aesthetic your personal magic. Does mm -hmm. that make sense to everybody? We're powerful creators at makeup artists. You know, we are people with just a brush and cosmetics, we're able to, to create masterpieces, artistic masterpieces. We, our images are designed to like evoke emotion. We sell things with our work. They, you want your images to kind of draw people in. You know, you want to look at a picture and feel something. You, there's kind of a story there. As makeup artists, we're incredible storytellers. And as a makeup artist, you're going to be hired to tell stories. That's what an editorial is. It's all about telling a story through makeup. So it's so much more than just knowing how to contour and shape a brow, if that makes sense, right? It's all about creating those works of art that are going to make you stand out from everyone else. And what I'm going to do today is just share with you just my personal aesthetic, as soon as I learn how to work this button. I have a nail pitch. <laughs> <laughs> my um, personal aesthetic and just my approach when it comes to... Okay, I have one question, actually. Is there a difference? Is there, is there a major <laughs> difference in... Oh, it's, got, it's done already. Oh, there but we is go. there a major difference in editorial makeup and, like, runway makeup? Or is it yeah, the same? Yeah, it's all different. You know, editorial makeup is just that. You're telling a story, and the story okay. is going to be different every time. So somebody who's doing editorial really has to have a breath um, of abilities and a breath of talents in makeup because you're going to be asked to do different things all the time. Sometimes you're doing an editorial to sell clothes. Sometimes you're doing an editorial to sell makeup, to sell something or to tell someone else's story. Yeah. So it's completely different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have the power to transform. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you just yes. pick up a brush and turn someone from that to that? You have to have some type of intention behind the work that you're it's doing. It's the same has person, to be right? Same person. Okay. There has to be some kind of plan. So I want to talk about the how right now. <laughs> okay, working with intention. That's where I want to be. So some of these concepts you guys probably already know, but I want to review them again because it's going to be the base, okay? I'm going to demonstrate to you today, okay? So there's four key things that I always think about when it comes to makeup. These are the four things, like, even from the beginning of my career to now, it's the only thing that I'm thinking about. So you guys ready? Yeah. Do you have okay. your pens and, and a book? And some of you probably already pictures. know this, and this is just going to be just reconfirmation. Any so the first thing is that any area of the face that is shaded lighter than the others is always going to appear what? Larger. Larger, more forward, more prominent than the area surrounding it. And it's an important thing to know about makeup, and it's actually the area that I have keyed into in my artistry. Because what I noticed right away is that the lighter area is the area that creates the shape. Our eyes and the camera's eyes always pay attention to what's shaded lightest 
first. So with that piece of information, I was able to develop like a concept or a series um, of thought on how I approach makeup uh, very specifically and differently for every person, and I'll share with you that in a minute. Concept number two, any area of the face that is shaded darker than the others is always going to appear what? Smaller. Right. Mm -hmm. Smaller, more, hey, smaller, <laughs> more recent. I'm reading it. <laughs> Cheater. And more camouflage than the area surrounding it. The idea of camouflage is something that stuck out to me as well. Using darker shading to make things go away. With those two things together, you can really shape and redefine the face. The third concept, though, is where all the magic comes in, and it has to do with reflection. Any area of the face where a reflective makeup texture is applied will always be the most prominent. So when I say reflective, what kind of products come to your mind? Highlighters, what else? Gloss, shimmers, anything that has any level of reflection. But beyond that, you can go from like a soft pearl to like metallic, right? And everything in between. The more reflective it is, the more, the more dramatic it will be, and it will be the first thing that someone sees. Reflection equals amplification. So any area on the face where you want to amplify the most, you're going to use the highest level of reflection. And I'm going to come back to that concept when I talk about the idea of painting with light that I'll be talking about in a minute. And then lastly, Makeup is all about contrast. The more contrast that you can create between uh, texture and tone, the more dramatic the effect will be. So with those four things, this is how I approach the face. Ah, okay. She's like, get to it. No, <laughs> it's just that, Dennis, it's just, okay. I'm just one of those people who pays to get her makeup done. Remember I told you on the phone? Yes, So please, yes. if anyone here like me, I'm sorry. I just always have to go to a makeup artist. I can't draw my eyebrow. <laughs> I can't do that. So, there are a few people like me, right? Okay, I'm, so I'm not alone. So, Danessa. Awesome, okay. <laughs> so, again, this is going to help us decide how we want our model to look. Is it going to be this type of a finish? Is it going to be this type of a finish? Okay. You know, you're using the same strategy, but the result is different. This same oh, girl this is amazing. recreated so many different times, looking completely different using those techniques. So it's not like a one way to do something. As an artist, you can shift shape anybody. You can create anything. You can redefine their face over and over and over again. So, the power idea... power of three. The power of three. I use three as my monitor, my gauge, to make sure with every look I'm creating dimension. Because when you use two colors, you may have layers, but as soon as you go to three, now it's creating shape, it's dimension. So as I'm working, I'm always working in threes. Three shades at least of foundation, three shades of powder, Three, 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 three. In the okay. eye, I want to okay. make sure I'm using three different textures. I'm going to use pencil, and then maybe I'll use something with pearl. I want to use a gel. You know, the more layers that you can create and mix textures and tones together, the more definitive the look will be, the more natural it's going to look, because if you look around the room, no one's one shade. No one's one flat surface. So in everything, I'm always looking to build dimension. So three is a number that I use all the time. So for this lovely queen, what's your name, please? My name is Akele Ruth. Ah, we're about to transform Ruth. So for her, I looked at her back in the green room and I chose shades for her. I'm not matching her at all because if I just try and find one shade to match her, is it really going to match her? Or is it only going to match some places, right? Because when you look at her, does she look like she's one shade? So there's never any matching in my mind. I'm never matching, like never. I'm always thinking about the concepts lighter and darker because I'm shaping. Shape is the number one thought in my mind. Like what is the final shape that I'm trying to get? What, where am I bringing in the dimension to her face? So three, so I'm usually using something a bit lighter than her skin tone and you can see the shade here is a bit lighter than her skin tone something that's maybe around her skin tone, and then shades, a series of shades that are darker. Because I know with that, I'm, I'm gonna be able to create the most natural look. So for her, we based her skin with a little oil. And I like to use oil um, 
and moisturizer. Ember Elise is a brand that I use often because, you know, it's all about how you prep the skin. The skin is, the look is going to be based on how you start. So if you don't take the time to put in for the skincare and make sure that the product is going to move beautifully on the skin, you're not going to end up magically with a beautiful result. So it all starts from the very beginning. Okay. Are you going to be needing assistance from the crowd at all? I just want them to talk to me and let, let okay. me know Ask that they're okay. Questions, and right? Yeah. Are you guys okay? okay. Seems like right. we have questions. Danessa, right. are you ready for questions? Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's I'm take gonna, one in the I'm audience. I'm going to listen and Can I have someone help me time? with the microphone, please? Okay, turn this way. Ah, seems like I'm going to have to come down. Okay, so I'm going to be giving out books as well. And for the books, this is how we're going to do it, right? So Danessa has a line of products. And I'm going to ask, you're going to give me one name and then you get one book, okay? Because apparently you all know, yeah? Okay, so, yeah. Uh, good afternoon. My question is this. You talked about uh, moisturizing our skin. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with makeups. I have a very oily skin. Okay. And each time I have my makeup, after about two hours, my face gets oily and it starts to cake. So what advice do you have for me? So again, the skin prep is really based, it's very individual, it's based on the person that you're working on. So you have some people with normal to dry skin, some people with oily skin, you know, so you're going to prep the skin based on it. For her, I'm prepping her skin for a demonstration for you, and my final look is going to be like glowing skin. So it makes sense for me to prep her with an oil, because that's the result that I want at the end. But for you, you know, you can prep the skin in a lot of ways. Some of you already know, if you follow me on social, that you can even prep the skin with powders. If you have somebody who's really oily, a very sheer micro powder, Evolution Powder is a powder that my brand carries where you literally put it all underneath, underneath the makeup and then apply the foundation so it helps to hold the oils back for, you know, throughout the day. So it's very specific based on the person that you're working on. It's a great question. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll just take the lady in front of you. Where's the microphone, please? Hi Vanessa. Hello. I'm Magdalene. I I have issues with um, sunscreen, so I'm wondering, is it okay to use sunscreen with makeup? So for every day for your use, I mean sunscreen is a very tricky thing. Like some people are allergic to sunscreen, and also sunscreen changes the way it tends to make. Um, Sunscreen tends to make um, makeup look ashy on darker skin tones. Um, it flashes back on camera in photography. So it really is based on, you know, the intention of what you're using it for. You know, on an everyday, especially in, in an area like this, you know, sunscreen is key. But it's really about finding the right one. You know, finding one that works well on deeper skin tones and that doesn't um, interfere with your makeup. I tend not to use products that have sunscreen in it because I'm, use, I'm doing makeup more, you know what I mean? So it's for photo shoots, it's for short-term environments, it's not like doing a person for like their daily activity, you know what I mean? So in that regard, yeah, it is very important and it's really just a matter of finding the right one. Somebody okay, way back uh, before we go to the next question, let's take the product line uh, okay. thing, the quiz, right? So Danessa, you're going to tell me if you're right or wrong. Okay. Okay, uh, which do I start with? How, how, how are your products labeled? Uh, well, if I tell you, then, then they're going to know. <laughs> oh, yeah, so don't tell me. Okay, so I have a powder here. Who can just give me a name of a powder? This is a powder, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Remember, I'm a novice. I know nothing about this. So, a name? Is anyone? Yeah? I have a lady in the back. So tell me. You? Yes, you. You said, you know, I, not a question. I want you to tell me a name of... Sorry? It's a question. Ah, no, we're not taking questions right now. We're just trying to play a little game, okay? So that I can give out her books. Don't you want this book? It's a book on contouring. Okay, let me showcase it so then you see. So while she's doing that, I just want to let you know what I'm doing next. This concept of painting with light. The same way, remember I said that the lighter area defines the face? So I pay a lot of attention to the lighter areas. And because I know that I want like a really dewy finish at the end, I want to start that finish right from the beginning. So I'm going to be at the base of her makeup using highlighter. So I'm going to use it in the beginning and at the end. 
I'm using this shade, it's called Goddess, and you can see it's like close to her skin tone. I'm gonna put this underneath the foundation in those high points that I want to come forward. Danessa, you just mentioned the name of the product. Did I? Yes. No, I <laughs> didn't tell you. Yes, no, you did. I didn't say it. I can whisper it in your ears, you just did. <laughs> okay, so is, does someone have an answer for me? <laughs> no, well, that's just the shade. It's no, not it's just the name the of the product. It's just, no, okay. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> the Enlight Halo. Oh, that is one of the products. Ooh, lady, put yeah. your hands together, please. <laughs> hands together. If you don't clap, it's no book. <laughs> so she gets, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so do we have another one? Ah, the hands are up now. It's the power of contouring. You need it. Okay, so let's take the lady in black. She seems very excited. <laughs> ah, she's going to sign it. We have the pen here. <laughs> she's going to sign it after the class. Evolution powder. So right now I'm using ah, a dual... Danessa Evolution powder. Yes. Yes! I think that one I, I messed up. I did say. <laughs> okay. So right now what I'm doing, I'm using a dual fiber brush to work this into the skin. So you can see, this is where I started. I just put it into the high points of the face. And then here, I'm working it into the skin. So that light is there right from the beginning. One more book. Oh, oh, now we know Google, right? You guys are cheaters. Google, I know, I know you all. Okay, Did so I one more book. Else? Let's have the lady. <laughs> Let's have the lady in green. Yes. Yes, you. <laughs> no, in green behind. Vision cream cover. Yes, that ah, is my foundation. There you yes. go. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. So where are we now? Is this like stage seven? Yeah, so now I'm just working in, and you can kind of see, probably from way back there, you can see like the light that's bringing onto her face. So this is going to give me that dewy glow, but keeping those highlights that I want in those key areas. You stand up for one second. I just want to move you forward. Okay. Okay. Be careful. All right. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Good evening, Vanessa. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you for coming. Thank um, you for please, having me. Uh, how do you maintain your brushes? So, you know, it's, a comp it's, it's twofold. If you're working every day, you can't always like immerse your brushes like in, a, in water and shampoo them because they won't dry in time, right? Okay. So you either have to have like twice as many brushes <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, which I do have a ton of brushes, um, but at the same time, you need to find, um, you need to find uh, sanitizers for your brushes that dry instantly. So there's two lines that I really love. Cosette is a line, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, their brush cleaner. He has an aromatherapy brush cleaner that's amazing. Um, it's very soothing to your clients. It cleans the brushes instantly. It's a vegan product. It's super safe. I love that. And then also Alcone has a product uh, called Cinema Secrets. You guys have Cinema Secrets here? It's also another product that dries very quickly. Um, it gets everything out of your brushes. But you know, you need to at some point immerse your brushes in water. If you have um, synthetic brushes, the best thing to do is to put it in boiling water because after you clean it, you want to reshape the hairs and just kind of lay them out. Okay. You know, and then um, if I have to use them quickly, I just heat up the oven, open up the oven door, turn the oven off, and then just leave it like right on the door so that <laughs> they dry faster. Okay. So let's so, take another question. So uh, you, just before oh. you ask, so I always work in threes, right? So am I just going to use one shade of liquid illuminator? Okay. No, I'm going to move on to another one. So now I'm going to add this one. It's called Desire. You can see the difference in the tones. Mm -hmm. Very similar to the difference in the shades of the, the foundation that I use. Okay, good. Okay. So we'll take the lady in white. In the middle row. Yes. Yes, we're going to take you after. 
Good afternoon, Denise. Yeah, um, my question is, hey. um, <laughs> my question is um, for beginners. Like, and what are the names of the brushes too? Um, what the names of this? Do we start? How many sets of brushes for beginners to okay. light makeup? Like, how many sets do we need? How many well, sets? So it's really, it's really, it's really more about having a brush to work on every area of the face. You know, so and having multiple sizes of brushes with different types of fibers because, you know, it's like if you're a mechanic, you have a series of tools that you use. If you have a screwdriver, you have a screwdriver in multiple sizes, right? Yeah. Um, same thing with your hammers. It's, it could be the same thing, but you have variations in size. Same thing with your brushes because you need brushes that fit in every area of the face. They're all going to do different things. You don't want to have a kit of all big brushes. You know what I mean? Um, you want to have some precise brushes. So like crease brushes, you want to have them in different sizes because that way you create dimension in the crease. If you use the same brush over and over and over and over, you're just doing the same line over and over and over. But when they come in different sizes, now you're blending, you're creating gradients, and you could be a little bit more detailed in your work. So it's having brushes that fit in area, every area of the All face. Right, my other question is, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a set of brush, but the point is I do not know their names. I only know the foundation brush, powder brush. I guess there are names for all, for different brushes. She's talking about so, names. Right, names well, you know what? Brushes. Here's the thing. You can always go pick up a brush set, and please excuse my back. You can always go pick up a brush set that tells you what everything should be. But okay. you're an artist, and you're going to use it the way you intend it. Like this brush was supposed to be a powder brush. I'm using it to put on liquid highlighter and to blend her foundation. So there's no rules. You know, getting started, maybe you need those guides. Use this on your lip. Use this in the crease. Use this for this. But it's really not that. It's really about looking at the performance of each tool independently and using what's best for you. We all work different, so our brushes, our brush belt is going to look completely different. Okay. Danessa, can we go into like a little gender war? Because I see some a guys. War? I see some guys in the audience, and okay. I'm thinking, so who are better makeup artists, the guys or the girls? Great, make people who love women a great makeup <laughs> artist. <laughs> okay, so let's take one from a guy. The guy uh, in the in the with the shades, and then we'll take you as well. Very diplomatic, by the way, Dennis. So well done. <laughs> so can you see there's two tones here, but you don't see any demarcation line? But those two tones are helping to maintain that shape of her face. So this deeper shade is still hollowing out her cheeks and lifting it, and then the lighter shade is still there. It's really just a matter of blending. You shouldn't see, you know, the makeup that you put on somebody's face. You should just see the results of it, right? Yeah. Okay, so you were going to ask a question. Hi, Danessa. Hello. Um, Health-wise, lead um, compound is not known to be healthy because it's cancerous. I'm talking about um, the lip, lipstick. Um, mm -hmm. So the longer the um, lipstick lasts on your lip, uh, means it has more content of um, lead uh, element. Mm -hmm. How do you get to know? How do you get to choose? a good lipstick that won't get to hurt you later in the year or later in your lifetime well, without late content? Well, so from my experience and what I've learned in the industry, like there are certain lead levels that are allowed in different countries. So like I couldn't even produce or sell a product with lead levels that are high. So everything is tested. There's lots of efficacy. Um, with product testing before they even hit. So generally, that's not a concern. And it's for that reason, because you know people were getting hurt or things were unhealthy. But it's really so regulated right now that there, it's really you don't have those kinds of issues. OK, so Dennis, I see you've put the stage three. This is, yeah. this, that's the other, what's that? So now I'm using the deeper tones. And okay. I'm just going to turn just a little bit. So I'm putting that in the areas where I want to lift or to camouflage um, or to disguise. You know, I'm creating shadows here underneath her jawline. So it's going to make this stand out more. Again, that idea of contrast, creating contrast and tones to help me make the shape. So this is deeper than her skin tone. I'm using it along the hairline here because you don't want to just have contour here at the cheek and not 
duplicate it someplace else or else it won't look natural, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm just using the deeper tone just to carve out the shape of her face. Does the skin type matter though? Because I'm thinking, she seems like she has no pores and I have pores and acne mm -hmm. all over my face. Are you going to achieve the same results? Absolutely, because it's oh. really about, again, the tools in your kit. You're the artist, so you have to decide what makes the most sense. If you're painting your bathroom white, you're going to choose not flat, matte paint, you're going to choose something that's glossy that you can clean off. It's the same thing with makeup, you're going to make decisions based on what your canvas is. So, if somebody has acne, if somebody has lots of pores, I'm going to always use a, 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 a base that performs at a higher level, gives me more coverage, um, conceals better. This particular formula I'm using right now is the Vision Cream Cover. And it's designed for that purpose. You can use it super sheer or get the coverage that you need. Uh, um, okay. But it will always look like skin. And I think that's also something that you can consider as you're building your kit. Makeup should breathe and live and look, feel like the person. Uh, Unless you're doing something that's like super artistic and, and you want to see it on. Like most people just want to kind of be a better version of themselves, right? Okay. So it should always look like skin. It should look like who they are. Like if I go, if I put makeup that doesn't look like skin, that's, that's masky on you, it actually brings out the imperfections even more. Oh, so okay. I think just to be conscious of the texture, making sure it moves well on the skin, you can find cover looking products that give you coverage without looking masky. They generally are uh, better performing when the terms you describe uh, and for issues that you describe. Ah, uh, okay. So we're going to take the lady at the back. She's been very, very persistent. Where's the microphone, please? The lady at the back. Ah, the guy has a... <laughs> Hello. Uh, okay. Good day, Vanessa. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I have a very practical question. Um, I have um, interest and passion for makeup. Mm -hmm. My mom and my dad... Um, actually stopped me. They called the family meeting on my head. And <laughs> Do you said, know what that means? A cauliflower on his No, they said they called they said, a family meeting on his head. Oh, it's a Nigerian thing. I had say. one of those, yeah, like so, an intervention. Yeah. 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 Okay. The, the issue there is I want to pay for uh, my makeup lessons, House of Tara. Okay. But my mom said, never. I can't carry a first aid box and come back home. <laughs> so what should I do about it? Because I have like interest for makeup. <laughs> so he's asking for advice. How to break break away from the family or thing? Well, here's the thing, you know, if, you know, for many people, it was the same for my family too. I had one of those interventions too. People don't really see makeup as a career, especially when they're older because it's just, you, you, they don't know about successful makeup artists and what that could mean. But I know people who sit at home in front of their computer and play on makeup and make like 10 grand a day you know, through social media. So makeup is a big business, right? Um, for you, if they don't want to pay for you to go to House of Tara, which I've had communications with them and they're a lovely school. I think oh, you know it. Oh, yeah, nice. I think they're wonderful. Um, Free advertising. But if you, um, there's so much information available. It's not like when I started where there was no other information available. You can go online and take classes online from brilliant makeup artists. Um, through Udemy, um, and also there's so many private online classes that are being given right now. The information is there, and there's so much free information on social. One thing I would say, though, is to be careful who you're learning from, mm -hmm. because you can learn a lot of the wrong stuff, too. You need to look at their body of work, look at if they're working, where they're working, because everybody's information is going to be different. Like, if you want to do bridal, you won't come to learn bridal makeup from me, because... I haven't done a bride since 2006, you know what I mean? Oh, really? So you want to pay attention to who you're learning from. There's great information everywhere. Just make sure it's very specific to what you're trying to learn or just really just be able to break it down and just take the pieces that make sense for what you're doing. So even without having to go to school, most of the makeup artists that I know didn't go to school. They're all okay. self-taught. So the opportunity still exists there for you. It's just more about being conscious of the information that you're taking uh, in. Yeah. Okay. But you know, it's funny that you will mention that, Danessa, about mm -hmm. you know the different types of makeup artists that you should go to. So in Nigeria currently, the big, uh, one of the biggest growing industries is actually the, the wedding and events industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. so 
there's a wedding literally every Saturday. Then and I'm, I'm moving like, here because <laughs> I'm telling you, you need I'm, to. I, I need told to be married. You, so and it happens that they're charging here. like say I don't know. Help my my math is really bad. So I'm gonna use like the most expensive that I have ever done. So you guys help me, right? I'm not the bride. To get my makeup done for a wedding, I'm not the bride, I'm just attending. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at 20,000 naira. 20, how much is that in dollars, just to help Danessa? Who wants to help me convert? No, no mathematicians, just makeup artist? How much? Sorry, 60? 80 dollars? Ah, so Danessa, so imagine I spend 80 dollars Every weekend. Okay, maybe not every weekend. Maybe just twice. Okay. Twice. Getting a married month. or? I'm not getting married. Oh, I'm just attending like, the wedding. Do you have? But that's what I'm oh. saying, though. I'm just attending the wedding, and that's how it is in Nigeria. Yeah. Because yeah? that's it. the business is growing. People are attending functions, and they're spending this amount of money on makeup. Mm -hmm. Can this work for a wedding look for a guest? Absolutely, like me? because honestly, it's really all I'm doing is using my own aesthetic, but I'm concentrating on the shape. Everybody wants their best features brought forward. So this concept is not just for editorial, it's for anything. Okay. So it's really more about building your makeup for the occasion. Okay. So if you're doing bridal makeup, you know that person has to be in that makeup all day. They're yeah. dancing, yeah. you know, drinking, drinking, falling, dancing some more. So you're going to build their makeup a little different than if you're on a photo shoot. Okay. So the concepts are the same. It's just making different choices on how you prep the skin and the products that you use so that it lasts. Okay. All right. So we're going to take the lady at the back. Please. I have three questions. Three. No. Is that like three wishes? No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number one, I want to know how to deal with laugh lines. Laugh lines. Laugh lines. Yes, most of the time when we do makeup, we tend to be oily there, it's separate. Mm -hmm. I would love to know what you do. So usually for a laugh line, that's like a line that's been developed over time. That, that's their face, they smile, that's what they do. You know, the only thing that you can do is kind of take the attention away from it. You're not going to make it disappear. Unless you're cementing that line and gluing it down, it's, <laughs> it, as soon as they laugh, it's there, right? We like so, <laughs> you, um It's really, reflection is amplification, right? Yeah. So if you don't want something to be amplified, what do you do? What do you do? Do we have an you answer? Make it recede. You recede. <laughs> no, if you don't want something to be amplified, if reflection is amplification. Yeah, so if somebody has things like that or imperfections that you don't want the, the attention to be drawn to, then make sure that those areas are matte. That will make a huge difference. You can also, underneath the foundation, you can underpaint it with a lighter tone. Because when you shade an area lighter, it's like you're taking your fingers and you're pulling it out, right? You shade an area darker, it's like you're kind of pushing it in. So if you have laugh lines that are deep, the light go into those lines with a lighter shade under the foundation, so it'll help to camouflage, and then keep the area matte. Danis, I think we're going to act. To, we're going to bring you. You're staying in Nigeria because uh -huh. as it is. We're running out of time, and we still have so many questions, and I'm sure so many people want to meet you. So what are we going to do about this? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to finish this. One last question, and then that's it from the audience. One last question. I'm going to use three shades of highlighter on her right now really quickly. So um, I was wondering if you had any advice for makeup artists in the room because as the moderator has alluded to a lot of us use makeup artists for events yeah. and yeah. the events are fairly frequent yeah but many times we all end up looking the same uh -oh. yes with the green glitter yes and you know yes. uh, if we don't look the same then we look completely unrecognizable yeah, i agree oh mm. my, i agree is there some advice for the ladies in the room put who your hands together for that question that's a very valid one because I go out with my friends, there are five of us, and we're all looking like, you know. I love that question because that's one of the reasons why, you know, when I teach, I always like to teach, start with a concept. Because if I just say, watch how I do this and follow exactly what I do, then that's what happens. Everybody winds up doing the same, but everybody's face is not the same, right? So that's why I said it goes back to makeup artists are artists. And what's definitive about you is your style, right? So there's, there's, there's a lot of homogenization in the industry right now where people see something on social media and just duplicate it over and over again. So my advice to artists is if you listen to this customer, she just said everybody's the same. 
If anybody, if everybody is the same, what does that mean for you as an artist? It's not looking good, right? Yeah. That means that you're easily replaceable. So that's why it's super important for you to de develop an aesthetic that's your own. Um, when it comes to makeup, people want to look like them, just better versions of themselves. Um, you know, guys, they always say, I don't want you to wear makeup. It's mm -hmm. not that they don't want you to wear makeup. They just, they want to still be dating the same person mm -hmm. when you finish your makeup, right? <laughs> it's really about just, again, like talking to your client, understanding what their needs are, and not being a machine that just like robotically does the same thing over again. Now that you have new ways of it, approaching the face, you can develop your own style, your own aesthetic, so that people don't feel that they can go to anybody to get their makeup done because they're gonna look like everybody there. Because that's when you get into the issue of price. And if everybody's doing the exact same thing and everybody looks the exact same way, then people are gonna go for the person that's the cheapest. I would do the same thing. Yeah. So to get out of that, you need to develop your own style, your own aesthetic, have your own voice in makeup. Danessa, you have 60 seconds 60 to turn seconds. this around. So Danessa, where are we right now? What stage so is So what this? I'm doing, this is like, you can see, she has on three different shades of foundation, uh, of highlighter, and you see how the highlighter is, is sitting and reflecting differently on different areas of the face. It maintains that shape. So on her cheek, you're gonna see different things. On her cheek, I have a tone called Angel Wings. Angel Wings is like a peachy pink tone, so it's acting as a blush. And I'm gonna add one more layer at the tops, the high points of her cheek. Notice everything that I do, I'm going back to those high points of the face just to keep the glow consistent. And I wanted to do an eye for you, but I think I would be in a lot of trouble if I did. don't have any more time I'm just gonna gloss her lids I'm gonna use a little glaze and then we'll be all done can I just say it was like one of the most amazing experiences of my career oh this put your the, hands together guys come on incredible audience Danessa thank you I loved every moment of it <laughs> oh it's amazing they love you right I love you more <laughs> And we can unveil her. She's ready for her walk. This is just a glaze that I'm putting on her eyes. It's called Kaleidoscope. We can take her out of her cape. Woohoo! Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, please. Thank you guys so much. Love you all very much. <laughs> the sky is the limit. Don't anybody let anyone stop you. Be who you are as an artist. Bring your magic to the industry. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the very near future. <laughs>